Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be updating our Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL to the December security update just released today by Google. And as always we need to download a few things. Let's head over to our computer now. And the first thing we want to download is the SDK platform tools. Now this is just the command line tools like ADB and Fastboot that is used to connect or pretty much communicate our computer and our phones together in its various states so that you'll need to download this for sure. And the next thing we want to download is the latest factory image for our Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL. Just download the one here with the light blue link that says link for December. You'll also want to make sure you have the latest version of TWRP. Luckily for us, there hasn't been any updates just yet. So the latest version is still 3.2.3-0. And last but not least, we'll also need to download Magisk. Now please download the latest beta version, or at least any version that is higher than 17.3. So please download the latest beta version and not the stable version. So I just have here all the files that we have needed to download. So first up is our factory image, uh, some version of Magisk that is greater than 17.3 or 17.3. The latest version of the platform tools, the latest version of TWRP, the bootable image, and also have the TWRP installer here as well just in case you need that. So the first thing we need to do is open up the platform tools zip file. When we're just going to extract the entire platform tools folder outside into our Android folder like that. That's good, we can close that now. We're going to open up the factory image. So this zip file here, we're going to open up the zip inside and we're going to highlight these three uh, files inside. So the image zip file, the bootloader, and the radio image. We're going to extract them all like this. And for those who are curious why I'm not using the flash all script, it's I just find it easier to identify, I guess, any errors and recover from them if one of those three commands does fail and we can work around that. So it's just better than, well, at least for you guys, I'm fine with using the flash all bat, but I guess for those who aren't as experienced with this, then it's probably better to take it step by step anyways. But if you just want to use the script, then just do that. I'm pretty sure you don't need this video to tell you that. But anyways, once we have everything extracted, I want you to open up the platform tools folder. And in the address bar, well, pretty much we need to open a command prompt window inside this folder. So usually you can hold shift and right click and, you know, open PowerShell window here. But uh, another way you can open it is actually typing in CMD or PowerShell in the address bar here. And that'll also open up a command prompt window or PowerShell window in the same directory. Uh, for those who are running Linux or Mac OS, you'll probably, probably need to do something a little bit different. And once you can do that, you can just head back out into the main Android folder where everything else is. And before we restart our phone or do anything, we'll need to ensure that we have the necessary files copied over to our phone. So I'm going to go here and change this to file transfer. And then we're actually going to copy over a few files that we need just into the internal storage. You don't have to put it anywhere. So first thing is, of course, the Magisk file that you want to flash. And the next one would be the TWRP installer if you want to do that, it's optional. And yeah, that's it. So any, also any custom kernels that you may have already installed on your phone and you want to reinstall on your phone, just make sure you download the latest version, okay? Um, because they usually update their kernels every time there is a monthly security update as well, if I'm not mistaken, but it wouldn't hurt to just double check in that case. Don't know what happened just then, but once you've copied everything to your device, we can now go ahead and reboot our phone into the bootloader. To do that, we're going to make sure the USB is plugged in down below, and we're going to restart our device. Tap on restart and hold the volume down button, and just keep holding in that until we get into the bootloader. Just keep holding it. And we're in the bootloader now. And from here, we can go back to our computer and we can run a few commands. So the first one would be fastboot devices, like so. And we are connected there. You can see the device's serial number um, in there as well. And we're going to flash the new bootloader. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image and then hit enter. And once you've done that, we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. You can type in this command here, fastboot reboot dash bootloader and hit enter. 
and that'll restart our phone back into the bootloader. Alternatively, you can actually use the volume buttons here and the power button to select the option to reboot back into the bootloader on your device if you don't feel like typing in some commands, and I'll do that next. So we need to type in the command to update our radio image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after the word radio and drag in the radio image and hit enter. Now once that's done, we can now go ahead and reboot back into the bootloader once more. So I'm just going to go to our device here. It's quite small. Okay, so use the volume buttons until it says restart bootloader and press the power button. And that'll reboot our phone back into the bootloader as well. And once you're back into the bootloader, we're going to type in our update command, and that is fastboot double dash, skip dash reboot, like that, and then type in the word update, and then I'll leave a space after the update and drag in the image blue line zip file. Not the factory image, but the one that starts with image. And drag that onto the command window and hit enter. Now you should see it start to check the bootloader version and baseband version, which is the radio. And it's going to start extracting the images inside here. And the bootloader is going to decide which ones it needs to flash. So we'll just give this a second here. It should take just under a minute for all this to do its thing. And the extra flag that we added here, the skip reboot, will prevent our phone from automatically restarting um, after it finishes the update, which is something we don't want because we want to flash or boot into TWRP and reroute our phone. So let's just wait for this to finish. Alrighty, so we finished updating our phone here. Now we can just boot up the TWRP image. So we're going to type in fastboot, boot with two O's, and leave a space after the boot and drag in the TWRP image and hit enter. And you should see once the phone gets the boot image, it should start booting up like so. We can switch back to our phone now. And we just need to wait here until our phone boots into TWRP. It may take a while, this is just something more of a side effect um, of this version of TWRP. Although in my experience, it's actually booted up relatively quickly. So here we need to decrypt our data, and this is the part where it's always a little bit tricky because of um, the security updates. We don't know if it has affected TWRP in any way, so we can always just cross our fingers and hope that it can decrypt our data partition when you enter in your password or pa pattern. And it looks like we have great success. So when the monthly security updates come, you never know if you're still able to decrypt the data partition. Now, the only concern is with the Pixel 3 XL because ADB doesn't work in TWRP right now. And that's our only kind of drawback because you could just sideload it if you can't decrypt the data partition. But enough blabbering, we're just going to finish up off the update here. So now what we can do is to flash Magisk to reroute our phone. So depending on which version you downloaded, just tap on the one you want to install and then swipe to confirm the flash. We can go back. And if you want to install TWRP, you can do that now as well. Flash the TWRP installer. And I also have one more thing to flash. So that's after flashing TWRP installer. And if you have a custom kernel that you want to flash again, if I can find it. So I'm just using the Elemental X kernel here. You can also flash it here as well. Okay, and once you've flashed everything that you needed to flash, you can just tap on Reboot System here and let our phone boot up. Okay, so we finished updating here. That was just Chainfire's live boot. So I guess it's a good sign that our phone is rooted. Now once your phone has turned on, you can just enter in your pattern. And now we can just double check if our phone is still rooted. Now that was a good indication that it was, so let's just open up Magisk Manager. And yes, we are rooted on the version of Magis that I installed. Yours might say 17.3, but that's fine. We can have a look at our modules and all of them are still here installed. That's very good. So our phone's rooted, which is excellent. And I think I'll just double check whether or not my kernel is installed properly. And it looks like it is. So that is correct as well. So that's it for this video, guys. If you liked it, please feel free to leave a like down below. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave that down below as well in the comments section. 
Alternatively, and even better yet, you can join us on Discord. I have a Discord server where we can chat about anything, especially when it comes to updates or phones, routing things, all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're on Discord, feel free to join my server, and I'll be there along with other people if you have any questions. So please feel free to join us there as well. And again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy flashing.